already the moves are coming in our system. That means the handshake is about to happen. Yes. D4, knight f6, knight fc, c4. Will we gonna see a Catalan? That's the yes. big question, and we see it. So this is what Daniil Dubov helped Magnus Carlsen prepare for the World Championship. Exactly. In 2021. And now we see a capture on d5, a recapture of the pawn. Magnus seems to love this type of position where he can have the isolated queen pawn from the black side, and he doesn't mind it at all. While other people, they fret, they hate having isolated pawns. Magnus says, let's go. I'll get the activity around it. Yeah, he plays the Tarash, yeah, so he turns a, a classical Catalan into a Tarash. On the other hand, we know exactly that Dubov from the black side was the one introducing the Dubov Tarash. However, that's with C takes D4 and Bishop C5, Bishop B6. That's a completely different spirit. And anytime you call an opening, the Dubov variation, you know that there's a lot to it. There's a lot of energetic play. And here, Dubov, he has his bishop, both of them, and he brings he is going to bring his rook to c1. I think he, in fact, has he done that yet? No, just now, rook to uh, c1 played. He's aiming down the c-file, and he's just saying, if we're going to go into an isolated queen pawn position, and black does finally take on d4, I was going to say that black had to lead the charge. Well, honestly, I'm very happy with white's position. Uh, because it's a very natural position. Black has this isolated pawn. Clearly, Black will be trying to put pressure on the e2 pawn. I'm expecting the move bishop g4. Yeah, on the board. Yes. Okay, h3 to kick that bishop away. I say that was Dubov's latest move. And Magnus, has he not moved his bishop yet? It doesn't appear he has. And, okay, we see it on the board before we see it on the cameras. Bishop back to d7. Maybe he was calculating knight takes d4 first, but either way, he retreats his bishop. Yeah, but uh, it's not only that the computer gives a clear advantage to white. Also, to my eyes, it looks like a very nice kind of uh, talash for white. All right, Magnus has provoked the hd move, but is this really such a big issue? White can always protect it with king h2. It just prevents knight takes d5 for a move because if you start trading pieces on d5, the h3 pawn will be hanging. But king h2, as you're pointing out, it just defends that pawn that is in the bishop's line of sight. So will Daniil play king h2? He's spending quite a bit of time on this turn. He was so fast against a niche, and we see the uh, chat saying 58% of them saying that Magnus will win if there is a decisive game. They think his chances are greater. But Duba was really spending a lot of time before playing King H2. Yeah, finally, he opted for it. And I also feel that White definitely also needs the move E to E3, just securing that D4 square, also making sure the E2 pawn won't be hanging. But how complex and difficult this position is, we see that both sides are taking their time. It's not easy at all to find a natural move. No, because there's tension between these knights on c6 and d4. The d5 pawn is under heavy fire. Uh, if you want to protect d5, black can swap knights on d4 and then park the bishop on c6. But a bishop on c6 with pawns on b7 and d5, everything is anchored. That's the good news. The bad news is your bishop's really serving as a big pawn, and it's not controlling a useful diagonal. Yes, that's very passive, giving absolutely free hand to the opponent here. Magnus goes queen a5. Maybe hinting at some bishop a3 ideas, also protecting the pawn on d5, eventually preparing rook a c8. Well, the great way to stop bishop a3, which is such a good idea for black to try to carve out those dark square controls, be a3 for white, saying you can't take my pawn if it pushes to a3, because then the rook comes to a1 to pin the bishop. We could see queen sacrifices. If, I mean, a3 was just played in blitz chess. Sometimes people go for some speculative sacrifice with bishop takes a3. You know, rook a1, bishop takes b2. I don't think we'll be seeing that in this game. Uh, it looks a little bit too risky. But in blitz, anything can happen. Yeah, anything can happen. On the other hand, yeah, after a c, white is also threatening to go b c b4. Yeah, so Magnus has to do something. He trades on d4. He looks very unhappy. I mean, we see on the camera he just took on d4. But before he did, bishop takes and a3. Wow. Is Wow, so now rook a1, he has queen c5 or bishop c5, which is, uh, bishop c5 might run into some queen f6, queen c5, mm -hmm. I believe rook a1, queen c5 would be the move, yes, 
So Dubov takes on AC, but now Magnus has liquidated. He has, I think, succeeded in equalizing the game. Yeah, Dubov did not look very happy to play this knight takes d5 move. And now after bishop takes d5, a draw has been agreed. It is a level position. Uh, the bishop's likely getting trade off with black plays bishop e6. You can take b7, but you will lose b3 in the end. So they're just talking about what could have happened. But Dubov's, you know, just happy to make this draw to not get a worse position to save a little bit of energy going into the next game wow yes and the players are discussing this gives us a chance to move on to another game the game that uh, we might be getting up is Niha Salin against Vladislav Artyamiev that's where we, we're gonna jump right into Nihal in